and go for the king is his show. Boys on the go, rain, hail, sleep, snow. The professional, very bilingual. Blow shit out the frame, aim at the stack, quo. Peace, human families of the planet Earth. You're now tuned in live to Super Hayward Radio. I'm your host, I see the two the tears. Along with my co host, Selena, the Empress of 10,000 Years, my brother, Saga Asad, uh, all of you, the greatest superhero in your family. We want to give life and praise to the ancestors, those coming in, going out. We welcome you. And also those who have had uh, living ancestors pass recently or within the recent past, we want to say love and light to them and safe travels upon their road to all through the infinite darkness that is the great bosom of the mother, father, father, mother, God that we all perceive as what we perceive it as. So with that being said, you know, uh, we want to get into uh, some of the somewhat mundane aspects of what's going on uh, around one of those things being the covert war between the police departments and fire departments throughout the United States. Um, there's some sort of uh, internal struggle in terms of who is going to be the one to dominate and who is going to be the one to capitulate in terms of how to best handle the so-called citizenry. This is uh, due to the fact that um, we've had a rash of arrests and conflictual situations of which people, some people have actually died. Um, where they have been fired people coming to help people in accidents and because the police don't want to finish their reports or feel like their reports is being obstructed, they are arresting these people, civil servants, other civil servants now. So that's like garbage men arresting, you know, meter maids, you know. Like this is how trivial and circumstantial and inconsequential their society is becoming in which now the actual civil servantry is rebelling and striving to turn against itself. So how can anybody in a rational society or in a rational way say that we are in a truly civilized society? We're functioning in a form of civilized barbarism at best. However, um, we are all works in progress and the United States is fairly young as a quasi organization, but now that it has reached its summit, it is now in a steady decline and it's looking to ensnare as many people who still believe that it is America to its banner while the rest of the world is going the opposite way. For those people that want to invest in uh, money that's not connected to the IMF, which is a good move in any account. You might want to check into Hungary because Hungary just uh, switched their currency and kicked the Rothschild uh, Jesuit cartel Jewish bankers out of the country, lock, stock, and barrel. And within two weeks, their GDP rose 150 points. So it's to the point now where they're basically about to pay off or or collapse their national debt by the end of the new year, which everybody else in the world knows is March 21st. And um, they're going to be in a realm where they can now basically have banking in a system that's debt-free. In this new so-called world that they're doing, the technology has created a backdoor technology that is sufficient and subsists upon people using outside measures to protect themselves. You know what I'm saying? But specifically created a, a... universal experience, but it doesn't become what it's supposed to be, you know? So then they just become a situation where people can't produce what it is they want to produce because that right was taken away from them when they signed over their money for gold and from that point on had to pay for everything with debt notes, with more debt. That's the problem. When you use paper money to such an inflated degree, you can't produce anything. Therefore, anything you have of value has to be put up for collateral. You know what I'm saying? 
it just becomes a situation where people can't continue in the manner that they have been. And so in the in the era of the shot life, uh, bleach life, uh, new con- new black American consciousness that is totally whitewashed, warmed over, you know, bleached out, you know, uh, thick bleach suppositories in they in they assholes coming out saying now how natural they are, holding up another weave. Like, come on, man. Like it's it's or worse, you got dudes who are straight doing the same thing and worse, participating in human sacrifice and shit. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, like this chick, Cyrus, that everybody is bugging out on is the posted uh, siren for, you know, uh, child ped- you know, pedophilia, how, you know, acceptable pedophilia is going to be within the next couple of years, but they prepping with that. They already doing dog marriages where humans are marrying dogs now. Like this is this is the era that they want you to co sign. You are the ones that's supposed to do it because everything gotta get ran up the flagpole through the black men and black women first. That's what they want. They want it, homie. So you can't you can't deny them what it is they think they want. Because when you do that, you know what I mean, there's a part of them that convince themselves that they miss something. But at the same token, when you know the known, the unknown is just that much more apparent. You know what I'm saying? However, this is not the era in which somebody can, can continue to do that the way that they've been doing Therefore, the isolation that, again, you feel or tend to feel sometimes, especially when you're around a bunch of people with opinions, is based upon the opinions that are coming from them or not coming from them. They're coming from their iPad, their Instachat, their Instagram, their Twitter, their their LinkedIn, their Facebook, their MySpace, their YouTube page, their all of it. It's, it's all as a means to to retard actual human communication, actually sitting down and writing. When was the last time you ever sat down and write a letter, wrote a letter to somebody? Real talk, real uh, so-called intelligence community technology, that's what they're going back to. They can't even, they feel that they've got so much data, what they call metadata. They have so much metadata now where they can't even trust it. It's too much information. They can't even trust it. So now they got to go back to pen and paper. <laughs> They're going to be going back to stones and sticks in a minute. <laughs> they be doing shit out here. You dig? You got more that's putting in major work on the, on this this beast who already got their stuff recognized to the point where the beast got to pay them out. But you wouldn't know that from mainstream because they're not going to tell you none of that because the more that do know... They don't want you to 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 find out who those type of moors are, because then those are the ones that's really doing it. I have a brother who I spoke to from uh, the continent, one of the countries in the continent of so-called Africa, and I built with him, and he told me the same thing. He said, "Nah, brother, you're right." He said, "They only become African when they go to America." <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He said in the country I am right now, I'm 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 from the country I'm from. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? They don't consider me that. I said exactly because there's no such thing as the United States of Africa. That's actually what Gaddafi was trying to do, which is why he he used to use if people used to peep game, he used to walk around with a big Africa button on, like he was in the '80s and shit in a Public Enemy video, and it was all jet black. That was the symbol. He got a bunch of the emperors and kings in Africa to acknowledge his his uh, position because he was really pushing on some nationalism shit on the whole continent. Let's push them all out. That's why the Arabs didn't like him because they knew that he was really of the you know the true fuzzy wuzzy tribe, the true Libyans. Again, the Moors, the ancient Phoenicians, these people. That's why they, they only mess with him funny style. But because he was half Arab, they had to rock with him. But he he would always tell you himself, like, no, nah, I'm African. 
He said, but that is only, you know what I'm saying, a term. We need to unify what that is. And, again, he the only nigga I know that was dealing with the more directly. It's real talk. That becomes that. Let's see. Also, uh, I'm taking calls a little early tonight. If anybody wants to call in, you can hit us up at 347-637-1184. So all of that crap that I just talked about is going on, you know, so what? You know, how does that affect me? Well, it affects you in the sense that these same people who now can't flip their money in Hungary, you understand? Now they got to find another drug outlet, drug market, to be able to pump their wares. So if Hungary's out, that's that's a major part of what they call the Eastern Bloc. So they got to find another Eastern Bloc to be able to pump that opium that they find out of Afghanistan. You understand? <laughs> This is bread. Now, this has nothing to do with the people who call themselves soldiers who are going over there shooting people and getting in firefights and shit and thinking that, you know, they helping the people. Like, that's cool. You know what I mean? On a, on a, on a, what they would say, a grunt level. You know what I mean? But anybody in real intelligence know humanitarian aid is always the first way in, in any occupied territory. And that's what Afghanistan is. They're being occupied against their will. You have a country in which the president, Harvey Kaiser, this dude used to be the head of Halliburton. He used to work with Bush and them. They actually got this nigga in the in the position to be able to flip the pipeline shit. That's when they was bringing the Taliban people into Texas in the mid, I think, 90s or early to late 90s, whatever, and trying to be friends with them so that way they could flip the pipeline that went through Afghanistan, Pakistan, whatever. So this guy used to work because he was from um, the the country. He was, you know, given a position and actually went got really far in it and wound up running the company. After that, he wound up being promoted after they went in there after the so-called, you know, uh, one of them wars that they, one of the TV wars, though, like, like Desert Storm, uh, uh, Swooping Freedom, whatever the hell they call it. But what, one of those... One of those initiatives, you know, it's become that. You can't p- position yourself, or they couldn't position themselves how they want, so they had to use what was left. So they put this guy thinking that he's going to rock shit, but he actually is now with national shit to the point where he's actually working with the Taliban government <laughs> against the United States while they did. Now, they're not going to say that on TV, on you know, regular TV. But they do in his state of the, uh, what do you call those, the, the press secretary releases. But you know how to speak double speak. You, only, you you hear it loud and clear what they're saying. They're losing ground. So this this soft uh, compliance standoff that they're going through right now at the Olympics is all part of it. So, you know, Putin and them is like, well, we'll get rid of the Saudis, you know what I'm saying? They just like the Jews. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In Israel. You know? But that's also because of the relationship with China and, and, and Russia. You know, it's not that. It just becomes what it is you have, what they have contributed to in the reality of what they've created. You know what I mean? So in all this sets, in month, there is no national agenda for so-called black people who live in America who are the ones that, for whatever reason, they're the most leery about. Isn't it interesting that it's always the ones with the least power who, who they say have the least power, they'd be the ones most scared of? Because that's how they get done. Uh, let's see, we got a call, 770-251, no Super Heavy Radio. Uh, Peace. Hi, um, I've got a question. Have you heard of uh, uh, Tammy Pepperman? Attorney Pepperman? Yeah, Tammy Pepperman. 
Oh, Tammy. No, yeah, supposedly she won a case against the so-called United States of America to where the new surety now are the, uh, the actual silver servants, and that's a lot of the reason why everybody's getting arrested or suicided. Uh -huh. Can you say that again, yeah, brother? I, can I, can, I can't find the the, uh, the actual numbers for the case, but I can email it to you. I got your email address. Inshallah. Thank you, brother. That makes a lot of sense. So no, it happened back in um, September last year. So the so they began knocked off the left and right. Ah, so that means, God forbid, something goes. So that means that there is no government. No, there is no <laughs> government. She is. There's they actually no have a government that they formed themselves. I'm not sure the name of it. I, I don't have a lot of details to give you. I just want to get you on the phone to peep you on game so that you can do your research and you look a lot better than me. Great, that. brother. That, thank Alhamdulillah for that. That's a great thing. It's a lot. Seen this go down. They had a ritual where they had some some brother who was like 77. He was uh, uh, affiliated with the police somehow, or whatever, and he went into cardiac arrest in front of this fire department and the fire department didn't come and help him. They didn't <laughs> resuscitate him or nothing. So right. the police came and got him and I took him to the hospital where he died. So when they went and asked the fire department what was going on, like it shouldn't have been like that, you know, the whole situation was vague. But what was interesting about it, you know, unfortunately this, this old man died, but what was interesting was the picture that the daughter was showing was him in a shrine of death. You know oh, what I'm sure. saying? They all, his they all right now. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, they off, offsetting the congressional debt with, with the people that actually run the government. Mm, you see, bro? You see? You see? You can't keep one learned. What does the Quran say? It says one learned man is worth more than a thousand worshippers. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So out of everybody that then watch this shit, I'm talking about this shit and boom. Allah puts in your heart the ability to seek it, so then boom, we dropped it on the show, and now we know why this is going down. So now we got to do is investigate the link, and now that creates the truth now that we can bring back to the people later, because we definitely want to share that. So, honest to you, brother, for that, and thank you for the uh, call-in and the uh, information, because I'm going to definitely do the knowledge to that. Thank and you, man. that says that everybody has to become vigilant and form their own government <laughs> that's what it looks like. Going at, everybody works together with the teachers, too, though. Oh. Yeah, they're going so far that they're getting teachers, doctors, oh. lawyers, anybody associated <laughs> with this so-called government. Oh, it's a wrap. Everybody that had the good jobs, right? Yeah, they, yeah all of them. <laughs> everybody that had the good jobs, the pension yeah. jobs, right? It's yeah. over right. Damn. You got dirt, they coming for you. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh because there's people in my family too, but I've been telling them. I've been, <laughs> we've been telling them, brothers, so they can't act like they don't know. So in the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess he is Lord. So thank you again for that, bro. And no I'm problem. Look out for that email. Thank you, brother. Peace. Peace. That was incredible. That was incredible. And that explains it. So like we've been saying, people, for years I've been telling you, the United States government is a quasi-entity that was enforced upon the people after 1929 due to the events that happened in which the United States of America was formally annexed through a Torrance title system into the Morris Science Temple of America. Sorry, that's what happened. That's what happened because the only Torrance title system that exists in America is in Chicago at the time under the filing system that the man put it down in. Therefore, the only other system who functions under the Torrance title system is the United Kingdom, and we know they are or were the police of all of the Europeans between the years of 1770, between the years of 17. Uh, 59 to about 1899. And even then, they only came to power really in the late 1900s due to the waning of the Turkish Empire, who was keeping a foot on their neck in tradition as to what they did to the former Moors. Because remember, we we'll do your history in 1492, when these dirty Moriscos started kicking their Moorish brothers and stuff out of Granada, it was the Turkish Grand Senor 
who sent the whole army of Turkey to go there and get the Moors, make sure the Moors and the so-called Jews, the Sephardim, the Canaanite or Jewish Moors from over here, and take them anywhere in the world they wanted to go. That's history. That's real black history. So <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? It always comes down to that. But because, again, our people want segmented based upon where they at. They don't want to accept the fact that we do have a greater empire and a greater family. We are remnants of that. Whether we want to accept it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you sold it out or not ancestrally, whether you compromise it, whether you betray it, whatever it is, we are the remnants of what was before. Western civilization was built on the back of the preservers of the ancient mystery people, and those were the people that they call the Moors, who in super ancient times were called Fomorians. There's a book that you can get called Muslims in the Antebellum, the Antebellum South. There's another book you can get called Free People of Color, Black Masters, White Slaves. There's another book you can get called White Cargo. There's another book you can get called uh, uh, Moors, uh, great one, Moors and Christians. Another one called uh, uh, The Nigger, the Mason, the Moor. Great books. It was only in our era that people actually started really going through and really putting forth era specifically to make things somewhat, as we say, more centric. Again, Afrocentrism was just another creation of. the Belgian situation because in the 60s and all of that and James Brown and these people was going to Africa and all that they're making us think that the, the black Afro picks with the fists at the end of them and the dashikis and the, all of that some people in Africa is making them shit and <laughs> we wearing it over here and niggas go to Africa these niggas wearing suits and everything else <laughs> you know what I'm saying they're like, yo, well, where's all it is? It, it, all of that is manufactured. That's just like just, just like people thinking that fortune cookies are Chinese. Like, that's American-made. That's an American thing. <laughs> ain't no paper. Ain't no Chinese food. Ain't no people in China, in China eating fortune cookies. <laughs> that's, that's racist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's actually racist to think that. That's how twisted they got shit. But through busing... They brought forth, through integration, they brought forth busing. And then through busing, they brought forth, uh, uh, what's, what's that? Uh, affirmative action. And then through affirmative action, we get political correctness. And then through political correctness, we get the quality of life. You see, once everybody's fed up with not being able to express themselves, they want to go back to being segregated. So they come up with shit called quality of life that says that if you or sitting on this park bench after 7 o'clock, we can lock you up because you're a vagrant. This is the world that they lived in. So now they've actually turned on their own people now with the civil service now are the sureties for the United States government. Do you understand? So if that's the case, how are they lock- they locking you up on their own account now? <laughs> so they're not even, so their organization is not really backed by anything other than what? The people who are working the job now? There's no greater people. There's no higher authority. So how can they enforce anything on anybody? You see? But see, I'm into, like, chaos is cool, you know, because out of chaos comes the order. You know? But before you get to chaos, you get shit like anarchy. One branch of music that the so-called white man could never fully get into how he really wanted was like dance hall shit, which is why they turned them into a whole thing about homophobia. A lot of blacklisted shabba ranks and targeted bujo and these people. Then on the other hand, you got the other flip where they started going in and the funk. You know, Bobby, uh, uh, blessings to Bobby Hammond. 
one of the only elders to ever acknowledge me. So I definitely want to acknowledge him. Wish him well. He talked about how the funk was something that they was never really able to get. The word funk comes from mfunke, which is like dirty smell. But we know that that's is an allegory or anagram for the primordial matter. For the primordial mess, anybody that's ever been at, or blessed to be at the birth of their child or their children, especially if it was a natural birth, as a man you would, if you have the mask on one thing, but there's a certain smell when creating manifests out, outwardly like that. That's what M. Funke or the funk to me is, that primordial matter or those hypnotical gases that we all come out. So the spiritual aspect of the funk was very deep-rooted and deep melanin. The elements of that were never act- actively or adequately duplicated. Like they had average white band and people like that. But nobody on the realm of people like Sly and and Bootsy and George and, you know what I'm saying, um, LaBelle and all of these type of people who lay groundwork for the same funk now. Because think about it now, those funk records and stuff is where a lot of the early 90s hip-hop started coming from, people like Redman and Jungle Brothers and, and these type of people, Tribe Called Quest and them. They started to use a lot of that old funk, them old records that was all dusty, dirty, sometimes smelly, right? The same essence being brought forth and resurrected, you dig, in a new form. So now that most forms of hip-hop have slowed down enough where you have so many other people getting it, where you have people like Macklemore being, again, Macklemore, you know, another Eminem. You know what I'm saying? Receiving four Grammys in the four corners and then using that whole ritual to bring forth a a, a, unif- a marriage between uh, homosexuality and hip-hop. And with, now, hip-hop will be the bastion of of uh, in paradise for all, you know, homosexuals specifically. You see what I'm saying? So now, out of that, now we get rappers like Young Thug, who's, you know, on some bisexual shit, wearing dresses, but he's a gangster. Shit like that, you know what I mean? Um, the kid without the Illuminati Prince mixtape. Little B is speaking at uh, Yale or Harvard or some shit. Little B, like, you dig? We're supposed to all support that because we support the bleaching and the wife beating and the adultery and the sex rituals and all of that, right? We're the ones, we we support all of that because this is what we wanted, right? We wanted to be amalgamated and integrated into the United States. The king said he fears that he's urged us to integrate into a burning house. But he had that quote in Black History Month. Because black history, for those of us that live it 365 days a year, realize that it really is just that. It's history. (laughs) This is nothing that you can use today in a realm other than taking five minutes to acknowledge some black man out of the day, black woman out of the day that you never heard of and that you stop thinking about right after you hear about it. But you live off their designs and their usages and all that every day. But you, most of the shit you just write off it being owned by white people. And white people like it like that. So they stick in suppositories and they ask to be dark skin. You stick in suppositories and you ask to be light skin. Right? So what that says is that both people hate themselves. So, so long as both people hate themselves, It'll always be the United States in the present fashion that it's in. Because that's what this place is about. Coming over here and starting over and being whoever you want to be. 
but they don't tell you that you got to do it alone. Or you got to watch who you're doing it with because they'll try to take your claim because that's what they did to the first four bearers of the people who gave them a position to even have some sort of freedom. We live at a different time, and we shouldn't be oblivious of that. In our relationships, we should be that much more diligent to the fact that at any time we can be susceptible to the melancholy of it. Where the clone, where you, you think you're the clone. You think you're the clone. Or you think you're really listening when it's not you. I don't know. So it becomes a proverbial quagmire because people want to actually live right, but they don't know where they actually are because the people in charge are not going to tell them. So that's why outlets like Super Heavy Radio, things like that, I think are good because it also acts as a vehicle for me or my family who are conscientious people who in some ways are conservative. You know what I'm saying? In terms of how we look at stuff. Because some things that's going down, especially in our own communities, it's just, you know, off the Richter, man. <laughs> and ain't nobody really trying to do nothing to really flip it. He actually spoke about a whole bunch of stuff other than that situation. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we did. <laughs> <laughs> mhm. Mhm. So you know it it, it. it becomes that. It becomes that. So, okay, wait. We got another call at seven one four. You on Super Heavy Radio? Peace, Peace. God. Peace, Allah. Brother. Oh. How are you? Man, I'm good, brother. It's good to hear from you again. You as well. Uh, this is Will. Yeah. Say again, your Brother phone went out right when you said your name. Peace, man. Man, I got good a. To hear from you. Good to hear from you, brother. I got a book on. I'm listening to the show. I got a book on for right now. It's called uh, Sweet Medicine Sites of Indian Massacre, Battlefields, Battlefields and Trees. So I'm going to. Nice. It, what I want to ask is because, okay, okay. I saw Taj when he came to Cali, right, in December. Mm -hmm. So I got, got, you know, I got a copy of uh, the Treaty of um, Peace and Friendship right in front of me, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the date of when they dealt with the tribes and all of this and that, right, what mm -hmm. I want to ask, because just, just getting into this knowledge now, I'm seeing, I'm seeing myself in the history. Now, what I want to yeah. ask you is, okay, these like Shoshones, Blackfoot, all these tribes and whatnot, are they, is, is, are the Moors a tribe in the Confederacy or nation that was along mm -hmm. with different tribes? And, and um, when they're saying, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, finish what you're saying. Oh, oh, because then, and then I'll go. I think you quoted that a couple weeks ago when you 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 mentioned about uh, the word Indian or whatnot, mm -hmm. and then it, it meant like indigo, which means mm -hmm. black. Yeah, indigo. In right. right. So, man, are these mugs, are these mugs talking about us? And 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 this is the last part, and then I'll shut up. Uh, I'm seeing all of these treaties that they signed with the United States government. And I'm comparing that with, like, say, the formation of what I'm learning from the books that I got from Taj and whatnot. It's like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how how the United States came to be, right? And 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 this corporation, I mean, mm -hmm. dang, they just went for everybody. I mean, they they came into be and then just like just it's just like a free for all, a, a war on all these <laughs> nations. And, and you know what I mean? Like, like, it's great. If, if they don't respect treaties that we signed, that the Moor signed with this mm -hmm. this uh, entity, then mm -hmm. all of these so-called Indian tribes 
There's no honor in the treaties that they signed with them either, either, really. Well, you know what I mean? Of course. Yes. A plus B equals C. That's right. A like B like C like. You know, Y equals self. That's what it ultimately boils down to. The simpler the explanation, the more most likely is what it is. The only time that situation is beyond compel is when people put themselves away from understanding the possibility of it. So it's it's not so much that they were part of these tribes. It's that we have a total misconception of what the country was like prior to white folk getting here. Because we take the last people to be able to get into an office and they write shit how they want, word for it, instead of any of the ancestors that live or left things for us to know. Like, Mount Rushmore was built, designed by a card-carrying lynch participant. <laughs> like, the nigga who the nigga who built uh, Mount Rushmore was a straight I saw that KKK K- 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 killer. Like, killer, though, though, like, you know what I'm saying? So, what we have to understand is that we are living in a reality that is somewhat fabricated and, and, and especially dealing with our history specifically, totally not true. So, the version of history that says that, you know, Indians was here first and then the white man came with his black slaves and then he waged war with other white men to keep the black slave. And then after he decided that he was going to free the black slave, he then destroyed the Indian. And then after he destroyed the Indian, he did, took over the land and then started the Industrial Revolution. And then from there started the the modern so-called American or United States society, right? That's That's how they say it happened, right? Before that being Columbus, you know, came from India, from <laughs> from Portugal, from Spain, uh, made it not to South America but to Haiti, and then uh, never made it to America, but America, for some reason, New York venerates him. Like, you see, it's all convoluted. None of it is real, anchored in anything that really happened. What really happened? No, they can't, because what really happened is so horrifyingly simple that I think it would drive most people mad to just really accept the fact that regards to how much they think they are something, they are not that. And if they really call themselves real Americans, then they have to acknowledge who those first and real Americans really were. And they don't want to do that because those people who really are that are at the bottom of the society, and they don't want them to ever realize because then they'll ask for it all back. Or they'll take it, you see? So we're going to make them aliens to their own land. Use Eat the crackers first. You, we're going to make them aliens in their own land by giving them a different history. And the way we do that is we seize our moment. So if we take it back to... No, no. Go ahead. Man, I fear, man, lately, bro past couple of weeks, I've been thinking about that whole story, too. I just don't, I don't buy it. I don't, you know, and I've been asking a few of my friends, too, like, okay, do you, do you guys think, like, we got so, okay, because they'll, they'll, they'll do the tar and feather thing, like that psychologically uh, uh, deterred us from thinking about revolting against an oppressor. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they'll do something so mm-hmm. horrendous and so horrific that, like, They'll have like our people in our own ranks will start snitching because they don't want to get the you know private parts cut off. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. how that kind of how that could mess with our psyche. But I don't buy that story that like thousands of so-called slaves was yeah. was held by you know a few hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oppressed. I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. really buy so that. You have man. to believe that. You have to believe that if you want to get money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's because that's, that's what they promote. Because in 1774, we got together 
and decided that we were not going to participate in the foreign wars no more. Two years before that, some Moors got together in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, and created the Mecklenburg Constitution in 1774, 1775, which predates this. 1776 went by like two, three years. But either way, these Moors did that. Now, represented the government that existed prior to the union of the six nations. So it was the, so it was the ancient societies Republic of Americano Sestados. Then it's the Union of the Six Nations. Well, it's the it's the first one, the Societies of Americano Sestados, for like thousands of years, right? Then when we get into more of a modern of what we perceive time, then we get into the union, that goes into the union of the six nations. And then that goes into for a couple hundred years, and then that goes into the Iroquois Confederacy, or what they call the, the Monarchan Empire. And then for a couple hundred years or whatever, it goes into that, and then from there it goes into the United States of America and General Congress Assembly. And then it goes from that to the United States. You see what I'm saying? So by the time it gets to these people, you dig, it's not really what it, the principles of it, the founders and the planters were consistent, but due to the corruption of their seeds, which is our ancestors, that's when we start forming. So 1774, we decide we're going, we're going to be this, and we're going to unify around this confederation. Those moors that was put outside of that or didn't want to become a party to that anymore were now aliens to themselves because they no longer had their titles of nobility. So because the fledgling United States was opting to be a separate quasi-federal government that would work as an administrative branch for the national or Republican form of government, he said, cool, these people now who are European at the top, meaning Morisco, like, like black people dressed up like George Washington and all of that, and then under them is their white counterparts who are the ones that they're grooming for their positions when they go back home. You see what I'm saying? So these dudes say, cool, we're going to operate the colonies for you. But these Moors don't have no government no more because they're not calling themselves that Moors and they're not part of your confederation. So they go to those Moors and say, well, look, we need help building up our country, which we're calling the United States. So why don't you come and help us do that? So they don't have their title no more. And according to the title that we provision we put out of Title 13, says that you can't have no title of nobility and be a citizen of the United States because the United States is essentially a, citizen, a government or country of a federalized government of corporations, of corporate citizens. So these moors come in, right, but when they come in now, they are listed as Negroes, which is a species of property in these new states that they're trying to form. So you walk on the colony outside the gate, you in the republic or the society or a, a mexum. Go back in the room, my mom. Or in a mexum or whatever. But you walk on the colony now, agree to go with these dudes. Now they done locked you up, and now they're calling you an enslaved African in England because the colony, England is well, only like the colony. That's like and, having a military in in. in say, like Long Beach. Now, yes. you might be, like, like say, the city of Long Beach is a republic, even though I know it's not it's mm-hmm. a municipality. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you go onto the property of the naval right. base, say, in Long Beach, now you're in right. a different jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Right. And whatever you're listed in that jurisdiction is what you're listed as and treated as. So they got you listed as an undesirable stateless person. So you come in, they list you as an enslaved African who was enslaved in England or was brought to England, which is the colony. But remember, you ain't get on no boat yet. You just walked on the colony, and now they flipped it on you, and now they got you listed as this. Then they put you on a boat down the Mississippi River that they've listed as the Atlantic Ocean. And then when you get off the boat at Gaines Greensville or whatever at the dock, you get off, now you are a uh, nigger or enslaved or straight African. You see what I'm saying? So if you speak English or whatever, 
they then start to beat you and do shit like that because they don't want you to alert the other dudes that you've been doing this to for the past 20 years <laughs> that this scam has been working like this, you dig? So they naturally right. ship you away from where you was from, you dig? Uh, so they did that, this for they about 85 time. years, and that became how niggas was raised in the United States. And then their lands and stuff was forfeit now because the lands that they had prior to them having a, a stake in the constitutional fabric of America was now seized because based on the Sestui Trust of 1666, they were absent of themselves and they were no longer in their present state of mind. And anybody beyond, they, beyond the sea and absent of themselves beyond seven years is considered dead. So they treated these Moors as civically dead and then put straw men names on them in lieu of their original names of their estate and then call those names slave names. That's why we call slave names when we got wrong government names later, you see, because the government of the United States was based on the enslavement of the original populace that gave it the right to function due to them sacrificing their liberty, a.k.a. freedom, for everybody in the world to have a national identity over here. Still paying for it and ain't getting no money yet. And it's so simple. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That when you just lay it out like that, can't no American scholar from Yale or Harvard or whatever come and contest that? Because no matter what he say after that is a lie. <laughs> no matter what any black man or woman say who went to American history and studied bullshit is a lie. And I'm saying this to you, you know, as somebody who's spoken at colleges and shit like that, like, it ain't nothing. It's so simple. Anybody, you could, we could start to tell this story to the children as, as babies, like a, <laughs> turn into a cartoon if we want. Because that's what all cartoons is about. Right. But, again, everybody want to say how it. hard they had it. The Yoruba had it more hard than the Egyptians, and the RBGs had it more harder than the Moors, and the this, the this, that, or whatever. So, you know. It's just constant infighting, yeah. Hey, you know? but I see, I think it's I think it's working though because we didn't. I want to. I, I got one more thing, man. Do you think, um, do you think it's the, the the shift is gonna come by come by by some uh, uh, supernatural kind of thing, or do you think it's gonna be more, it's gonna be more a, a physical confrontation, a physical thing? Mm-hmm. You think something's going to happen like 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 uh, supernatural for for people to really wake up? Because mm-hmm. I, I I see with my own eyes I see the awakening happening. You yeah, know, I'm really not in in, in some of us in those of us that want it. I think, but I don't think it's for all of us because all of us don't want it. I don't think. And and that's okay. I think that's okay too. I don't think anybody should be a part of anything. They don't want to be a part of. Oh. <laughs> but, hey, you know hey, what I'm saying? Here, but that's just me. Hey, bro. Um, I be listening to this show on Blog Talk too. It's called uh, it's called High Frequency Radio. They do it. They do a show mm-hmm. and from eight to like eleven, uh, Monday through mm-hmm. Friday. There's a brother on there. You know, I know about you. I be mentioning you. Mm-hmm. There's another brother on. There. His name is. Uh, he's just a guest too. His name is. Uh, Gerald Mario Bay, but he quotes a lot from you, man. And uh, oh yeah, that's the homie. That's that a big homie, man. He's a good brother. Yeah, Mario Bay, now man. He always big up. Yes, yeah. Very man, hey, man, great I think you, um, I, I think you should you and uh you and you, you should do a show on uh do a show on there, man. Because we we be we be we be pumping you up. Miguel will pump you up. You know. I'll, I'll, Inshallah. I'll, Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I get on that show because this brother, man, he done had he did, he has had a uh, Bill Valentine on there a couple of weeks ago. I tuned in this morning. Mm-hmm. Delbert Blair's on there, so it, it's about mm-hmm. time, man. You get on, there, so, you know. Inshallah, I'll you talk know. to uh, uh, Inshallah, brother. It's mm-hmm. coming together big time, man. I really appreciate you, man, and um, you as well, man. Uh, Thank you for the calls. I appreciate it. Love, love and light to the family, brother. You as well, King. Great question, though, man. And be safe and happy researching. Hey, uh, thanks to you, brother. Peace. Peace and love.
Yeah, man. Let's see. So, uh, yeah, that's what that's basically what went down, man. As far as I, my researchers put it together, and then those more or those of us that no longer could use our free national, true free national names as our our titles of nobility, began to use their tribal names as that. So you're no longer John Smith, and you're John. Smith. You're no longer of the Smith tribe of Chirasagis of the clan of Bay. You're just now uh, John Smith, Chara, Cherokee. You see what I'm saying? Now, Cherokee takes the place of that. But the United States, in its form as the federal government, no longer took position over them because they were not the original they had the agreement with. And that's how it went down. Mm-hmm. And then that became what it was. So... Like I said, those books that we mentioned, everybody could do the knowledge. And they didn't created a, a good basis for you to kind of put together a lot of the stuff I said. Uh, on Super Avery Radio 7.0, we're going to launch that, uh, I believe. It's by the 14th. By the 14th, yeah. This Friday, so look for that. <laughs> Word. And um, we're going to be building on that. And some more of what I'm talking about now, uh, really decipher what happened to us. Because once you put that together, you really get a, a strata of the responsible parties. So I don't want to be extra redundant and go heavy in on that because I have so many times before. But the very basis of it is that we fell because we were divided amongst ourselves and are still that way. So whether you are more or whatever you call yourself, just know that we as your brother and sister want you to be as right as you can. And the only way we all can get right is for us to be honest about where we at. So the only way we can do that is being honest with ourselves. Hello. So uh, anybody wants to holler at us about uh, any our temple or anything like that that we're constantly out here, you can hit me up at House of L at hotmail.com. Uh, anybody that would uh, want to hit us up about any book signings, lectures, anything like that, hit us up. Again, at Hotmail, House of L at Hotmail dot com. You could also check out www.arsiadedupatias.com, as well as www.darkskullfourteen dot com for the world's most dangerous comic book novel. It will definitely be a page turner. And um, you could also please check out www.blackmambaworkouts.com. Selena's got some really cool um, workout and cooking joints up there as well. So we want everybody to check and support that. But definitely look out for Super Angry Radio 7.0. It's going to be more of this, but in a more lighter and intimate fashion, inshallah. And like I said, anybody want to hit us up for lectures, book signings, music shows, whatever, hit us up, again, through House of L and com. Anybody would like to make donations to us or the temple or both, you can do so through PayPal at Duke of Tears at gmail dot com. So with that you want to say love and light, stick to that which is right, go forth to the right, open up the three eyes fight. You know what I mean? These are the times that test the hearts and minds of men in such a manner that they don't realize they're being tested. So once you realize it, you better jump on it, I'm telling you shit is moving. So, love and light, um, thank you again for your time and in this space and uh, the support of Super Avery Radio throughout the years. And uh, I'd like to publicly thank my wife, Selena Miguel Cordova L., the Empress of 10,000 Years, for always holding us down and making sure that the technical aspects of the show go down how they're supposed to and and that I eat and all of that. But, I mean, that's a given, but I'm talking about in terms of the show. So, love and light again, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.